and welcome to the Content Advantage, a talk show about content for content professionals. I'm Scott Abel, and with me today is my co-host, Megan Gohuli. Megan, how are you today? Good, Scott. How are you doing? Excellent. Thank you to the audience. We apologize. We had a little technical glitch. We hope you're still there with us. We see you in the chat room, so don't worry. We'll uh, fill you in on how you can participate here in just a minute. Megan, why don't we talk a little bit about um, our guest today? Yes, absolutely. So to, to sort of kick it off, the Content Wrangler, your group, Scott, did an annual survey of technical documentation folks in the industry. And there was a really interesting statistic, and that is that 60% of tech doc teams surveyed say that they are now also responsible for application programming interfaces or APIs and software development kits. And this is up just 17% over three years. Now, seeing that there's that much interest in the subject of API documentation, we've invited former NASA API documentation specialist, Robert Delwood, to join us today. And he's gonna talk about the need for documenting APIs, what types of skills are best suited for the job, and how you get started. Welcome to the Content Advantage, hey, Robert. Robert. Hey guys, thanks for having me. Thanks for joining us. So I work for a, a vendor of a, so, a software platform that facilitates the delivery of personalized content as a service. And we include in that API content delivery from Swagger and Java Docs and different tools that, that, that developers create API docs in. So what I am curious is if before we get started, can you just tell the audience a little bit about who you are and what you do and your connection to this topic? Sure. So um, I, I, I am Robert Delwood. Um, I've gone by, by, by several titles in, in, in this um, career. Programmer, writer, and my favorite is program, programmer writer, which is specific to, um, to a, API doc, documentation. Um, I've, I, I've, I've been doing, doing this for, 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 for a long time. I started in the late 90s at Microsoft as a um, as as a program writer, and once I once I found found out about this this role, I never I never looked back. This is what I what I really in, enjoy enjoy doing. Um, it it takes advantage of both writing and programming. Excellent. Robert, before we start the show, I want to talk just briefly to our audience. First, thanks for hanging in there with us during our te technical snafu at the beginning of the show. We were delayed by a few minutes, and we apologize for that. Also, you should know today's show is being recorded, so you'll be able to access a recording of today's show shortly after today's live show is over. You can use the same URL that you're using to watch the show today to watch a recording. Also, we can't see or hear you, so you don't have to worry about your microphone or your camera. And you can ask a question at any time if you want to by clicking the Ask a Questions tab located underneath your webinar viewing panel. It will open us a little text window that will allow you to text a message or a question to us. We cannot text you back. Just be aware of that. Also, we've got additional content available to you in the attachments section of your webinar viewing panel. You can find troubleshooting information to help you navigate Bright Talk if you have any technical challenges, as well as information provided both by the host of our, or the, uh, sorry, the sponsor of our show, Zoom and Software, and our guest, Robert Delwood. Uh, we're also going to send you out a copy of our report, the Technical Documentation Industry Survey, the Coronavirus Edition that we just completed. Uh, it's a summary of what we learned from the Technical Documentation Survey men Megan mentioned just minutes ago. We'll send that to you via email on the uh, after the show's over. And at the end of the show, I'll remind you to give us a one through five star rating with five being the high rating. There's also a little field in which you can type some comments if you'd like to share with Robert what you thought about his presentation today. Okay, Megan, let's take it away. Very nice. Let's dive in and start with a definition. What exactly is an application programming interface? Mm -hmm. So an API, application programming interface, is the set of commands that a, either a computer sends to other parts of a computer or, or to, a, to another system entirely. So for example, when you communicate with, with Amazon from your browser, you send a, you send a command, search, um, search what what not and it, it returns stuff what happens in the background is that your computer the, the browser sends a command to to the to the amazon it's that command that's that's part of the um of, of the api it's also commands with, with, with within a computer too so um when when you print for for example the printer has its own proprietary language Windows has to un un understand it. 
And the command that Windows sends to the printer is also part of the API. Now that we understand a little bit about what APIs are, why do we need to document them exactly? And for whom are we documenting them? So why, why they need doc documentation is because these APIs are not discoverable. Meaning, if I want, mm -hmm. want to write my own application to, to hit, um, hit, hit Amazon and get stuff back, I need to know the exact command. I need to know the parameters, what they mean, and any other caveats, warnings, or, um, okay. or, or th things to, to, to know about. The programmers cannot discover that. They have to be told. Mm. Very interesting. Very interesting. Yeah. So I read a couple of your fabulous articles on Medium. One of them is titled, entitled API Documentation Writing is Not Technical Writing or something <laughs> very similar to that. In another article where you list all the rules of API writing, you actually say this is technical writing. So I take from what I read that that you see it as a form of technical writing, but a highly specialized version. Is that is that right, or what are the differences exactly? No, that that that's a, that's a, a, exactly right. It's 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 like being 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 called a um, a, a me medical writer. While they're te while they're technical writers, their specialties is so different that they themselves don't really always associate with um, tech writers. So um, it, it's tech writing, and 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 the exact quote is. Um, from um, from one is that this is tech writing, so we shouldn't have to guess what something means. In other words, if you read something and it's not clear, it's not it 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 could it can be rewritten to to convey the meaning. Um, it's not tech writing in that there is a large programmatic aspect to it. You are you are talking to programmers about programming. You'll be working with um, code code snippets. Code um, code samples. Uh, some some people write complete. Uh, the program writer writes the complete application to um, to as 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 a showcase. So there is a very large de dependency on code and programmatic concepts. And to view it as tech writing does does er everyone a disservice um, along the way. You can't treat it as a tech writing project because there are other considerations. Yeah, right, it's not generic, and I so API writers use different tools usually than sort of the more standard technical writer too. Yes, um, in fact, one 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 of my um, points of, of, about this is don't get associated with a particular application. Tech writers um, real often when you're looking for for jobs, you know, say you you need Flare or you need um, you 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 need Dita. You're very caught up with the writer being the tool. Tech, um, API write, writing is, is much is 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 much 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 different. Um, in in the course of a day, you may actually use eight nine different programs. A um, compi compiler like um, um, in IntelliJ, you may have to hit a database to to um, to get information right with MS um, SQL. You'll you'll be working with um, macros macros and command line operations. So. I, I advocate going in into this as don't concentrate on the tool. Learn the themes, learn the concepts, and then after that, everything just becomes an, an implementation detail that 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 you can look up. For um, for for instance, if you want to, it, um, you may know Word and you uh, and highlight text and um, and and make make things bold bold or italics. But when you go over to it to another word processor. You know the concept. You know you can make things italic. Maybe you, you'll have to look up to, to see how it's implemented, but you know it's possible. It's knowing what's possible is the important part of this process. Excellent. And you also made some comments in um, some of your writing about what you have to love in order to be good at documenting APIs. And I bet our audience can guess, but I want to hear you, you tell us a little bit about what you think we have to love in order to be good at documenting APIs and why. I do. I do very, very, very much love um, pro, pro, pro programming. I've been doing it for um, for um, for um, quite a while. It always sounds a little bit hokey when 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 when, when you say oh, it's my passion, it's my um, it's my interest, but it, but it really is. So I like programming. I like telling people uh, 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 about programming, and I, and I like the job well done at at the at the end of the day. 
Before we move on, this seems like a really good time for Megan to tell the audience a little bit about the firm she works for and the software that they make. Megan, can you tell us a little bit about Zoom and software and how does it relate to the topic of today's show? Absolutely. So Zoomin's platform ingests technical product content from any source, including Swagger, Javadocs, all the kinds of places that you might see some of this API writing. And uh, published is it out no matter how it was created. And we deliver it into a documentation portal, into your community, to a customer service site, and even into the product itself. And so in this way, our portal makes it possible to unify your highly technical content from code based tools like Swagger and Javadocs with your more standard technical documentation that you might have in a CCMS, as well as with your information that you might be storing in an LMS or some other location. So we really unify the, the delivery of all of that kind of content. Excellent. And you can learn more about Zoom and software by checking out our handout section. It's located in the attachments area of your webinar viewing panel. And of course, you can navigate by pointing your web browser to zoomandsoftware.com and check out their offerings there as well. Okay, to get back to the show, Robert, I, I think this is probably a question people are itching for you to answer. What can a technical writer do right now if they've decided that they want to consider moving toward documentation of APIs and software development kits as their focus? Okay, great. It's great, great question. There actually is is a is a lot that 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 you can be doing right now to um, to prepare for it. Plus, it also also has the added advantage that you can actually use what you learn right now in in your current job. So the um, number one 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 thing that I recommend <laughs> is to learn a computer language. Um, obviously, you're a programmer. You're talking to programmers. You're going to have to know the um, the um, the um, pro programmatic concepts. So learn a language. Now a lot, mm -hmm. lot, of, lot of people, a lot of sites, say, oh, ask you know which language is the best or, or which one should I le learn first. I take a little more generic approach. It doesn't matter. Eighty percent of any one language, ninety percent of any one language is is identical to to another language. So if you learn the concepts in Java, for instance, you pretty much know everything about looping and um, uh, variables, variable assignment, decision makers, um, um, uh, con conditionals. Again, th this go goes back to my er earlier point. If you know that a loop or a conditional is possible, then if mm -hmm. you switch o over to a language you, you don't know, C sharp, for instance, you can always lo look it up, but, 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 but you know it's possible. Now there there are some things that that, that make things um, easier. If, you, if you're working for a company that has a web product, then then maybe starting with with Java is a good um, good point because chances are that's what your developers will, will be using. Um, if you're computer based, um, C sharp, um, um, which can also can also be be, be used. I I always advocate um, even even learning VBA, Visual Basic for for um, automation, which is words automation la la language. It, they use the exact same concepts. They have loops. They have decision making. They have um, um, var var variables and and assignments. Plus, if you learn VBA, it's because you're writing macros to help you do your job right now in in Word. So so we can also use whatever we learn right now. Very the second, nice. Yeah. The um, sure. second thing. Uh, I, I yeah. was going to say, I think, I think you mentioned earlier that you had three skills that you thought that were something that f people should focus on. And I think you've got one of them down now. Okay. What were the other two? So the, um, the, the, the other skill to, um, to um, learn, which is actually more important, I, I think, than learning the language itself, is how you learn the language. Now, a, min a minute ago, I said mm -hmm. that. That textbooks are 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 essentially an API. You don't know anything about the language. You read the textbook. You get the information. Pay attention to how you learn learn the the code. Which techniques work best with you? What what makes you remember? What makes the concepts clear? Um, are do they do they have narrative before the examples? Do they have only examples? Do they have a complete? Do, do they have a website that, that that you can run these things? Um, when when you learn, excuse me, <clears throat> when you learn a language, you're sympathizing with the programmers, you, your audience. You know what problems they encounter. When you learn about learning APIs, you're 
you're now empathizing with them because what you, what you don't understand, they're probably not going to understand either. The te- and the techniques that make you understand it or not un- understand it is all is the critical part of it. So when 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 you learn a language, learn and, and it's not book versus um, it's not book versus vi- video. All although there is that aspect, but what makes you remember? What makes concepts clear? In all cases, take what you like and make it better. Make it yours. Make it make it customized to, to your own style. What you don't like, either don't use or make better and and and, and make it yours. So that, that that that's why I say you're documenting it for yourself. It, the processes that you learn, you see to learn for yourself, it, it will be the same ones the developers will um will um will will learn from. Learn that, empathize with with, with your audience, and you're already 50% of, of, of the way there. The uh, that, that's really sound advice, I think. Yeah, I love that. And and the third thing about about um, the the third aspect also about 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 learning learning code is use it for your job right now. Mm. Learning learning a language, you know, spoken language French, um, ger- German is good and handy in a classroom environment, but you don't really know it until you get out and start using. It. <laughs> to use so, it, yeah. So whatever whatever language you use, start start applying it to your job. Now, now I mentioned VBA uh, a, um, min- a minute ago. It, it, it's, it's simple. It's built into to, um, to, to, to Word. So start u- using it. Start finding tasks to, um, to use it. This is an aside, but my motto is if you do anything twice, automate it. Now, the important part of, of, of this process is not that you, you end up with a tool that, that can save you time, but because you push yourself in learning. So you write a basic script. And it does it does something, but the very next thing that's going to happen is you're you're going to say, "I want something else. I want a file dialog to open. I want um, I want people to en- to enter the the um, the um, source fi- file name." So push yourself in in this language, learn new things. You also get into the nitty gritty now of a- of APIs. You want to add an an an, an o- open dialog. Um, box to, to your to your um, v, VBA script. You're going to have to work a little bit to find what it is, find all the customized um, con- controls and implement it. Keep doing that and you are truly understanding what what, what the programmers felt. Too often um, new new API doc- documentation writers will will think one call, the basic call is is the end all for that call. It's not. It's only a starting point. So if you understand it is so if you push yourself, you will understand the nuances of, 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 of each call. You are now one of the developers if, if you do all three of these. Nice. So I, you talked a lot about um, learning at the end there. And I love that one of your rules in one of your articles was always be a beginner. And I can totally relate to this because when I started in tech writing, I don't know, two decades ago, uh, I took on a job where I was writing content development kits, um, software developers kits, and deployment plans. And I knew nothing. I was so not technical and I had to learn on the job. But I actually think I did a better job then than I did 10 years later when I actually knew what I was talking about. So can you talk a little bit about what you mean by always be a beginner? So, mm. yeah. So you, you, you need to always be be be, be aware of the um, of, of of what what you're reading a um, a, a developer's a, a, a experience. So I say always be a beginner because you're looking at everything fresh. You don't know the environment. You don't know the acronyms. You don't know the dependencies. You don't know what 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 data structures are 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 available. I don't care how experienced these um, these these um, programmers are at programming. The thing is, they're reading your documentation to learn your product. So, so if you don't know a certain aspect of a data structure or um, or whatnot, that by definition needs to be explained. If you don't understand it, chances are they 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 won't either. Now, I've seen too many times where a where a um, programmer writer gets gets me more experience in 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 the product, and they lose 
they forget this be a beginner thing and they start using acronyms and they assume um, data structures and, and de data values because they know it. Well, again, right. if, if you walked in new, the reader is not going to, to um, know that. Always be, 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 be focused on, on what you know and always view things as a beginner. Absolutely. Right. And we can get some of this in the attachment section, right? You have a, I think you included that article and some other stuff. I, if not, I will. Okay, great. Yeah, I think if you go to the attachment section, you can find the articles and the, he's encapsulated many of these concepts in those writings as well. We just don't have enough time to cover all the details. So definitely deep dive into the attachment section and see if you can grab some additional content from Robert. All right, I think we're, I think we're gonna talk about employment now for just a minute. Sure. So the whole point of, uh, of all these exercises is, of course, to get a paying, paying job in, in, in the field. Now, th this is a, a, a curious fit field because I, I mentioned a minute ago, um, a company will, will hire programmers, some very expensive programmers, to come up with, with an API. But if people don't know about it, mm. what, 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 what is the point? So as, an, as important as you think this is, it really is a very overlooked aspect of, um, excuse me, of, um, of, um, de of development. They have no problem hiring expensive programmers, but they'll only hire one, maybe two, two API programmers to support 30 or 50 um, de developers. And that ratio just, just does, de does, does not work. The point of uh, I'm, I'm going to is, this is an uh, this is a misunderstood field. It's under ironically un under documented. You can't go to um, school and get an API um, programming degree. There are there are there are a few um, certifications. Excuse me. There there are a few pri pri private companies offering um, certifications, <coughs> but mostly it's it's um, self taught, mm. which means getting a job is is often. Um, is 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 definitely a a problem. Ironically, the most most of the programmer writers I I know in the field now were simply in the right place at the right time. They they were and, and I'm not being glib here, um, but there yeah. were two writers who um who were who, who who were unexpectedly approached by by their management, thinking that it, that any tech writer can do any API programming um, API, right. Right, writing job, and they asked them to um, to um, switch 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 over. So at, after hearing hearing that, which which, which has a lot of, lot of lot of problems, a lot of uncertainty uh, uncertainty. There's the, uh, the training is is all is almost um, non non existent. But but it started started me, me th but but they do well at this too. Over time, they they grow in into the job. So um, being being in, in in the right place. At, at the right time is um, is 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 for, fortunate, but it's hard. It's hardly um, um, predictable. So the um, next next way of doing it, and again, these ideas aren't 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 necessarily clever, is to ask. Ask your boss. Ask the dev lead. Um, can I can I do a, a API writing? They they may not have one. They may they may need someone. They didn't. They may not know you're interested. They don't think. They, they, they thought you you don't have have the right skills there's there's a lot of reasons why why they won't ask ask you so just ask see 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 what the answer is um you'll you you you'd be surprised the the um third the third way of, of doing it is is again not very clever just apply for the jobs there there there's a lot of websites um linkedin indeed monster dice that that they're advertising uh, for for jobs like this just apply and 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 see see which what you can do. Now, in the meantime, you can be doing the the, the things I I, um, I I mentioned earlier about about, about learning it. But um, since since this is not a very very formalized in industry or or um, community a, a, API write, write, writing, there aren't many um, re, re requirements either. The willingness to to do it is is a very large large part of it. Um, a fourth way of, of, um, of getting paid for this is to go through um, free freelance sites up 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 work. Um, for for instance, they're always they're always looking for um, a, API API um, um, write writers, and um, a, 
apply apply for those jobs. May, maybe do it on a volunteer basis. Maybe do it on a um, on a um, paid 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 basis. But regardless, it will get you the, um, the 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 experience you're you're look you're looking for. And then you can always parlay that experience into into um, more in, in, into more ambitious more ambitious plans. Nice. So, Robert, you mentioned that there's not a lot of structure to these roles when it comes to finding a good API writer. So if yeah. you're a job candidate and you're trying to get your first API writing job, what kinds of tests or requirements or methods of determining whether or not you have the skills can a candidate expect when they go into an interview? Oh, great question. It, it is. And <laughs> Just as erratic as as the um, the nature of this job is is the uh, spectrum on 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 those. So a um, a technical writer with with very little um, a API experience will give you a traditional um, a, a traditional te te tech writing in interview. You may have to be grammar. You may have to write something, re 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 rewrite something. A lot of them don't even give um, pro programming um, it, it examples. The the, the, the approach that I, I, I like the best in, in looking for um, for writers is you give them in, you give them a sam a sample call and uh, and ha and have them just co comment on what they what they like about it what they don't like about th this API page what they understand what what they would what they would do differently again go for the the concept go 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 for the thing. You can always teach them. They, the company will always teach you what they want want you to know. What they can't teach you is is the theory on 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 on, on all this. So if you've looked at uh, and and so a few more su suggestions um, uh, 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 about this that tie into that is you can write you can write your own API. This is a little more a little more ambitious, but um, Postman. Uh, there and and there's other sites that let 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 you actually write your own your own API and you can document it. Um, the other idea I, I I would suggest is look at as many APIs as you can. There's an excellent site called um, the the Programmable Web that has yes. tens of thousands of um, of APIs and they range from high end professional ones like like Google down to um, Garage, uh, garage pro programmers write, write, writing their own. Look at as many APIs, and again, this goes back to the earlier point. See what you like about it. See what you don't like. And may may make improve in improvements. So it's these concepts that I, I think that should that should be um, that should be emphasized in interviews. Even if they don't ask you specifically about uh, about programming, you bring it up. Let them. This is about programming. If, if, if they don't un, un, un understand that, they they need to. So bring up programming. Bring up um, what you like in in APIs. Give them an example of a of, of a good one. Give them an example of a bad one. Why is it bad? Um, recognizing bad is is just as, as important as good because you you can you you you, you can Im improve on it. You, you should always be able to improve on it. So um, in, interviewing is. Is just a very the quality of the interviews are, are again very 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 wide, but look for programmatic questions. Now you're not expected to, to be a per programming e e expert. Um, you don't have, you, you don't you have to have syntax right. Semicolons. It's the concept that that's important. If you know the concept, everything else becomes an implementation detail. And that's that, what you want to be. That's going to have to be the last word on that particular topic there. And that was a good uh, long laundry list of things yeah. for people to do. It, uh, we have one more question before we take questions from the audience. And I want to see if you can isolate this uh, because you've already talked about some of these topics as you um, were making conversation about them. Do you have a tip that's specific for those looking to segue from creating more traditional documentation to API docs that you haven't mentioned already? Other than other than just just do it. Learn learn a, 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 a very simple exercise is go to one, one of those programmable web websites. Uh, find find a simple one, one with uh, three, four, maybe ten ten calls, mm -hmm. and implement it. Try take their instructions and and try try to um, to to actually run a a um, a um, a a command. And, 
and, it, and if, if, if you can do that, you're getting the hang of what API documentation is, is all about. Excellent. And if we I remember what you've written, if you fail a few times first, that's okay, right? You're going to fail a number of times as you push yourself. I've and, and in my list of um, of um, of um, of um, sayings, I say if you're good, you'll fail 99% of the time. That's really the only way you 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 learn. Then you will hit the um, the right idea or the workable idea. Wow, that's going to be disruptive Absolutely. for some of our people who believe that they should be perfectionists. Yes. <laughs> and, what I hear you saying is. It's not the perfection that gets you the knowledge. It's the fumbling around and then discovering the solution and having the aha moment. Oh, I learned something exactly, new. Exactly. And I'm sorry com companies feel that it, it has to be perfect the, um, the, um, the, the, for the first time out. Now, I'm not advocating inefficiency or, um, or, um, or doing this intentionally. But if you try an idea earnestly and it doesn't work, it's not a problem. In fact, you, may, you will learn from it. Excellent. We're running out of time, and I'm going to let Megan take the first question from the audience. And if we could try to uh, use short uh, answers for these, and then if there's a pro if there's a question that just is too much to answer in the time allowed, give your best guest answer and and tell them some um, ways that they may be able to investigate deeper um, to find the answers. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So uh, someone asked a fairly lengthy one that I'm going to shorten down to. Uh, for those that do have experience writing APRs, APIs and they're using their company software solutions, how do they add that experience to the resume so that recruiters will actually see what they know? You, you can always say, I was an API writer for, for, for your company. The problem is most of the APIs they're going to be working on are, um, are um, pr proprietary. Right there? Yeah. So you can't really show them. Um, you you can't show them the um, the the, um, the the actual code. Now you can show you can show them similar things uh, if, if you want. You can spin off some some and 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 a page or two and and de um, de de identify it just to just to let the people know you know what a good page looks like and and what calls are are. Or you can write write your own doc, doc, documentation even if it's fictitious. Follow the the style that you 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 use. There there's nothing there's nothing wrong with that. What types of portfolio pieces should a tech writer who wants to transition to a, a dev doc role um, put in place to kind of show off um, their skills and their knowledge? Again, um, if you if it if you actually have a, API page examples, that that's good. If not, like like I just said, make make one up. Um, companies like are always impressed with um, with Git projects. So it mm -hmm. it is a is a um, is a, re re a repository si system, um, but 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 it, but it's popular. So if you write your own project, put it up as, as a Git Git pro project, they'll um, they'll um, like that. And my my solution to this is <clears throat> is 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 write articles. That that's something that they yeah. can do, do without company permissions. And it doesn't matter what it is. Right. Take any topic that's that's um, important to you and write about it, and hopefully you'll come across as um, as informative and and authoritative. And if you know that, then the implication is you know the background to to that. Yeah. Nice. So what There's I hear you saying is your Medium blog can actually serve as a way to dis to describe your capabilities and your knowledge right. because you're pro and con. You're talking about the strengths and the weaknesses of approaches. I think that's a, a smart strategy. Megan, there's a couple more questions. Should we try to get a few answered? Yeah, one real, really quick. Somebody asked if um, they should try to submit to open source oh. as a way to build their portfolio. And I don't know if that's a good idea or a bad idea. Well, if you're <laughs> <laughs> Anything uh, which showcases your um, your um, your 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 skills is good. All experience. All experience is is good, and everything is practice. So, if you can contribute to, to open source, you know, great. You have your name on 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 a project. Nothing wrong wrong with it. Also shows out outside in interests. Yeah, certainly motivation as well, which I think is right. good for some leaders. Want to make sure that people are motivated. Billy asks, is there a possible high level template or approach or methodology that we can use to document APIs, e.g., uh, function calls, uh, details, etc.? Billy asks. There is no you, there <clears throat> there is no 
unified um, te te template for this. The de facto standard is um, Swagger's pet store um, example. Okay. It's public and copy it. You 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 can modify it. Um, I do advocate that each API is personalized and uses your your style in 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 presenting it. Um, that gets new ideas. That's get that gets new um, new um, new new ways of doing it. But no, there is not. There generally is not a single te te template that you can use. Interesting. So somebody's asking about the difference between API reference docs and conceptual or static web documents. Can you comment on mm. that? They are. So um, we, we've been talking specifically about a API reference doc documentation. Mm -hmm. that's, a, that's the stereotypical um, um, uh, doc document in this field. But there are probably seven to 10 other types of, of documentation re re related um, to, to this. There's getting getting started. There's there's uh, tutorials and there's concepts. Okay. Um, some concepts need 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 more ex explanation than others. They can be a separate article or they can be inlined in into the um, in into the reference guide. But, but yes, you need you need the concepts at, as well as the actual calls. When so you, different types of deliverables, just like tech tech writers might be exactly. responsible for exactly. primarily yep. documenting the software in a user guide or manual or collection of content if you don't want to <laughs> use the page analogy. Uh, but they also might write a quick start guide or some getting started information or maybe a tutorial because they're super good at it. Uh, so here's another question from one of our uh, users. Uh, one of our viewers today, I've been asked to develop a template for our API docs. What's a good source to see the types of information that we should provide? Um, <laughs> Is there a source? I, I, again, that's, that's, uh, that's, there, there, there's no sing, single source, but okay. uh, looking around, go to, go to the Swagger pet store. That, that probably has 70% of, of, of what every page needs. And then look around at, 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 at others. And I mentioned that before, go to programmable yeah. web. Go to go to um, Google and see what information they they present. Um, I, I have some some something I call the I, I, I know this is not a sh uh, the shortest answer. Um, I, I have some something that, that that I call the thirty minute test. Take it take any API and you have thirty minutes to make the first call. And if you can, you know, great, you can do it in ten minutes. If you can't, fi figure out why. And that's the why you can't is the why is the information that you need to include. Hmm. That's interesting. So a related question, what are the most important sections in an API doc? Are there specific most important sections? As, as absolutely. There's a, I, I, I've always had a priority okay. in, in this. The API reference guide is the number one. You have to have a listing of, 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 of the calls. Um, the second one is you have to, have, so if you, if you come up with, with a page just of the calls, Call names themselves and parameters. That's the minimal ba um, um, ba ba basic information that you need. The, so they can start making calls. Second priority is to expand on that. Maybe one mm -hmm. minute for for each call. This call does. I, I'm a big believer in 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 the one sentence introduction. This call does X. If this is the call they're looking for, they can read on. If it's not, you save them time, and that's it. That's the um, and they will love you. For 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 that, if you can save some time, then you add parameters, parameter descriptions. I think every call should should have a sample um, sample um, um, in, in, in example of making the call. Maybe several examples with parameters, but these are all pri pri priorities. You have to do one before you you can do the the other. Here's I think probably the last question. Although thank you, audience members, for submitting them. You're submitting them faster than we can answer them. So <laughs> we we'll have, have Robert back and uh, maybe talk about Q and A in a different format, maybe in a, a yeah. blog post or something. But the, this is kind of an interesting one. I think that you'll um, you'll at least have some opinion about it. Do you have a recommendation for well structured or well explained enterprise level API documentation that might be in the public domain? Examples of small APIs don't usually scale well. REST API examples also don't always map to the content for more traditional language APIs like C++. So do you have a recommendation for some place in the public domain that um, where, where, where we can see the applications at scale? I don't know that I, I have a good answer for, for that. Okay.
that that's a perfectly acceptable answer robert you can't know everything about <laughs> you just said a little while ago is okay to fail so there you go we'll learn something new and we definitely learned a lot of new things today so thank you for joining the show i know our audience really appreciates it and thank you audience members for submitting questions we'll ask robert to follow up and maybe answer them in a blog post to give you some more content and maybe the content wrangler and zoom in can add some context and make some of that content valuable for you so thank you for joining us and thank you megan for being my co-host again and as asking such great questions yeah, thank you for for uh, hosting this wonderful show. Before everyone signs up, I signs off. I want to make sure that they uh, give us a rating. So go down to your viewing panel located um, below the at the bottom of the window and use the rate yep. this tab. Give us a one to five star rating. Leave any comments you'd like to about today's show. We read every single one of them, so definitely leave those comments. Excellent. And before you go, I'd like to encourage you to be on the lookout for an email for our next show, which takes place Tuesday, April the 27th, when we're going to chat with content analytics guru Colleen Jones, the founder of Content Science. We'll discuss the relationship between business success and actionable content analytics. You're going to learn what impact content analytics have on an organization, uh, the organizations that collect them and act upon them. So there's two different things there. And you'll also hear several suggestions for improving content effectiveness that you can use to ensure you're making smart business decisions about your content. All right. Until we see you again. Uh, thanks for attending our show today and joining us on a regular basis. We see your names, those repeat visitors. Thank you for uh, continually supporting us. Until you see, uh, until we see you again, be safe, be well, and keep doing great work. Thanks for joining us. Yep, thank you. Thanks. Bye. Ensure your customers find the answers they need with Zoomin. Bring together product content from all teams and sources to deliver a unified, personalized content experience. Check us out at www.zoomandsoftware.com. Thanks, everybody. Bye. Bye.